Well, I said I was going to uh, do a wrap here, so let's go ahead and paint it out. And get the straight edge lined up. And I get down here. Start rolling along. Need some sort of rotary uh, clamp. Put a little pressure on it down here where my hands, fingers are at. And then paint in the direction you're going. I was going to make more epoxy and I thought, nah, keep it small. It's easier to uh, make smaller batches and not have it kicking on you. It's warm out in Seattle there. It was going to get up to like 90, which is pretty untypical typical of this area. In fact, I think we were going to break a record for the number of 90 degree plus days in a row. And this is one of those areas that not many people have air conditioning. About the cars are about the only thing that come with air conditioning up here or maybe office complexes. Get out of their wayward hair. Yeah. I guess uh, not many much editing or uh, cutting on this one. You might as well show you real time. And then finish out. That will dry well there. Okay. We'll give it a little spin in the direction to. Be absolutely certain that it's tight. Well, we're getting close to being done. One of the things I had to go out this last week, or I guess it was this week, was to find some etching paint. And this is, uh, what, uh, Duplicolor self-etching uh, self primer. And you need this for the aluminum. 
in order for it to stick. So I gave it a spray job on all the tube. There's probably about three coats on here. And you need to use that etching stuff in order to get uh, paint anything to stick to it. So uh, I'm probably going to prime them now. And I've got my, my blades pretty much finished. I gave them a, a coat of uh, uh, epoxy all the way around on the ends and everything. And the other thing I wanted to show you too was on the inside here, uh, I had some old closed cell, dense closed cell foam from an old whitewater kayak uh, pillar, you know, to keep it from uh, collapsing. And to make tight fitting uh, gaskets, just take your, your pipe and then push it down onto the stuff and it, and it turns out and makes you a nice little round uh, uh, filler. And I already jammed those in the depth of the handles on both ends. Well, except on the high end, the, uh, the uh, handles were already in. And I thought, oh, I forgot to do that. But I got them on the low end to keep water out, to keep them from waterlogging, because that's where most of the, you know, the, in, in the, the paddle meets the water at that end. So I'm going to go ahead and stuff these guys in the tubes. And then I think I'm going to, you know, once they're in, then it'll make it a little easier to do any kind of like final um, uh, surface finishing. And then I'll prime everything and paint everything at one time. And uh, I've got my, uh, the rudder for the O&P pods outside drawing. Uh, the paint, uh, some old System 3, when they were trying to get into uh, paint, uh, it was a good paint, but it takes forever to dry. And so they abandoned that project because they figured, okay, they're a epoxy company, not a paint company. But it's a good paint, but it just takes forever. So uh, that part will be done. I'll, we'll assemble the rudder later, but uh, some of this is going to slow down. I just picked up some uh, metal roofing for my barn, and I'm going to start working on that tomorrow. It's supposed to cool off a little bit, so there will be a little bit of time delay here. So let me go ahead and tap these in off camera so you don't hear me um, complaining. And I may have to do some sanding on this to get them in. So we'll come back. Well, I might as well let you get in. It was going better than I thought. I got uh, the shaft supported by my uh, my bag here, these gravel bags. People keep asking me about these gravel bags. And they are, uh, I, I made them for when I was doing video production to put uh, on top of the sentry stands and other things. Uh, they're uh, 1,000 denier uh, backpack cloth and then heavy nylon strapping. And they're filled with, I went down to my local White River and got uh, some... Uh, sifted out some round rock and washed it clean and then sewed it up inside the bag. Each one weighs about 35 pounds, but I got my rubber hammer out now. And that's about right too. And I also went yesterday and got some fairing compound and uh, smoothed these out. So now they're in place and I may on the end tip them up uh, where this will be up and then pour some more epoxy and put some tape around it or else uh, maybe get some gel magic in there to hold it in. It's not going to go anywhere, so i got my nice new shiny ore. Let me do the other one we'll come back. This is the second one. I think when I put this extra layer of uh, uh, epoxy on top of the glass, it, it's kind of like lubrication. So I've got my rubber mallet out, mallet out too. So. to go in just a hair. So here's here's my ore. Oh, God, they weigh next to nothing. Next to nothing. And I'll put the black plastic tubing on it and set it when I get everything painted. But I've got some high quality ore. I haven't uh, there's a little bit of bend to them, but I won't know until I get out and roll whether or not it's going to be too much flutter. Uh, I can always remove the uh, blades and uh, put on some other ones. I've, I was thinking of another way to make make the blades themselves. So, um, Well, I went ahead and it's warm out today and uh, I knew it was going to dry fast, so I was using my, uh, my System 3 uh, 
LPU, some white I had left over in the cross linker. And I put about, I don't know, four ounces in a little cup and about a half an ounce of water. But I had the half ounce of water in another little cup and I mixed in the, uh, stir in this into the separate water and then pour that mixture into the uh, uh, paint and then stir it up. And then uh, I've been brushing and I tried to roll her, but it's giving me too many bubbles. It's fine on a flat hole, but uh, I went back to uh, using a brush. And then when you're, I found when the, with this flat board down here and then these clamps, I was able to, you know, just rotate it and then brush each uh, quadrant and uh, work pretty slick. So that's got probably, gee, I don't know how many coats. I'm going to, each one's probably been about three up and downs all the way around. So I'll let that cure tonight or maybe this afternoon. It's, it's so warm, it'll be uh, pretty much dried and I might uh, give it another, you know, three coats this afternoon. See how hot it gets. Well, I had to go back to square one. I, uh, I was dealing in snakeskins. Let me pan down here. I had, uh, had that last segment where I was using uh, the LPU paint and I had a nice coat and I came out you know, the next day to look at it and I had a little spot and I scraped it with my fingernail and it was, must have been uh, some spray epoxy or something that came up and I was down to bare metal and I thought, wait a minute, what the hell's going on here? So I picked it a little more and I pulled up a little, uh, little fold, something like this. And so I thought, oh, what the hell? So I, then I started working away, and I got <laughs> it just it peeled right off the uh, material. This um, uh, etching didn't really etch as good as I thought. I must have had something on the surface. So uh, I had to, and then this LPU paint. I've told, I think I've said before the. Uh, the LPU paint is almost like, when it dries, it's almost like a hard plastic finish. And it, it adhered, I mean, you know, super well to, to the primer, but the primer didn't adhere to the aluminum. And so it just came up, and just peel it off like uh, it was a, a skin on a snake. So I got some big long pieces here. And uh, so I uh, took some 150 sandpaper and uh, really roughed it up and cleaned it up with some alcohol and, and some other stuff and uh, and re reapplied the primer and it seems to have hardened up good so i'll go ahead and put some more lpu paint on this thing um i'm not i don't uh i'll do that off camera i think i did enough of that in that last clip so we'll come back when uh, 